Hey everybody and welcome. We're so happy to see you because we are coming to you live from Living Felt because it's Happy Wooly Wednesday! Oh, those angelic voices are the joy voices of the magical fairies here at Living Felt, and you're going to get to see them in just a minute. But on today's show, we are making our very own handmade journals from our own handmade felt fabric. So if you've been following us a little, you know that last week we finished off our mosaic felt fabric, and I'm going to tell you if you're brand new to us how to go back and see that. But you could also use your artful felt fabric or just any kind of fabric that you've already felted to make these soft journals. Heck, you could even use regular old fabric, but we made our own handmade felt and that's what we are doing today. So if you've just tuned in, you have tuned into our live show, thank you for being here and thank you everyone for joining us. If you're watching the playback, we have a little bit of an intro where you get to meet some of our crew. They show you some of the materials that we're working with to make the products that we have in front of us. So you can hit the fast forward button and jump ahead to the tutorial we'll put a link in the description in the meantime I want to say hi to some of our BFFs I see Lynn in Georgia hey and Anne in Connecticut so nice to see you Jacqueline is in Virginia and Gemma in Canada Christina in Poland always joining us it's really late there I think thank you so much for being here friends so today we are doing a little tutorial and we're actually not felting we are going to be making our own handmade journals and we're going to take them all the way and make your own journal pages and I'm going to show you how easy it is to make those with very minimal skill and hopefully finding a lot of the things that you have around the house. So we're going to have some fun cutting and pasting and gluing and all that and then I'm going to show you a very easy way to bind your journals. Um, we'll look at one way to bind the journals for sure um, and it's super fun and it'll give you a really fluid journal that you can work with over the years. Um, so for those of you who don't know, there's a live chat going on during the live show. You can say hi and where you're from. So many of our friends are already doing that. This is an interactive show, so participate in the conversation, share your own tips, ask your questions, absolutely. And everyone who participates in the live show, your name goes into our magic bowl and we give away prizes at the end of the show. But if you're watching the playback, we also give away prizes for the comments after the show in the following week. So on that note, I have a couple of winners from last week's show. We made our wet, we finished our mosaic felt fabric and there's two videos that support, or prior videos support how to make that. So we heard from Michelle McLaughlin. She said, this is a great project. If you use hot water towards the end to shrink the project, how often do you apply the hot water and do you spray it on or submerge the project? Thank you. So when we wet felted this project, what I do is either I'll plunge it into a bucket of hot water if I'm at my table, but if I don't have hot water at my table, Michelle, then I will just run it under the hot water and then usually continue felting it from that. And you just only need to do it usually once or twice. It depends on how fast you get the shrinkage you're going for in the fulling process. So great question. And then Judy Hancock says, hi guys, I missed the first half hour, but wanted to ask if I wanted to make a wall hanging from the felted patches, so this fabric, would I make four layers of the base layer instead of two? Love all the Wooly Wednesdays. And we did answer that uh, for a wall hanging, when you're wall felting a fabric for a wall hanging, there's gonna be different types of uh, thicknesses that you want. Is it gonna be behind glass? Is it only gonna be behind a mat? Do you need it to have enough body to stand up on its own? So we encourage making a sample to determine the thickness of the fabric that you need for whatever project you're making, whether it's a hat, a purse, a uh, journal cover or a handbag or a wall hanging. Did I already say wall hanging? I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, so Michelle and Judy, you both win prizes. We uh, gave away last week a little wet felting assortment, some merino tops, some soap, a resist. So we're going to be sending that to you and you get to pick your own colors. So go to our website. Um, scroll to the bottom, click the contact us and tell us what colors you want or you can just give us a call. That'd be fine too. Cool. So I hope y'all are ready to get started. I have the fairies here. They're going to share with you some of the fibers from our shop. If you missed these prior videos or maybe you caught them and you still haven't chosen what fibers you'd like to work with, they brought some selections of their own to show you and they'll tell you where you can find them. So the first up is the most magical Miss Fairy Anne. Oh. Yay! <laughs> 
Hey everybody, thank you so much for being here with us today. We've definitely been daydreaming about being on a tropical beach uh, since it's now summer, so we wanted to take this opportunity to share um, the, special, the Paradise Island Specialty Designer Pack with you. The Specialty Designer Packs have a wide variety of embellishment fibers for texture and finer fibers like merino top, merino silk blend, so I, they're ideal for wet felting. They'd be great for projects like a vessel, a scarf, nano felted scarf, or even if you wanted to make a picture or a journal cover, that would be awesome. <laughs> this particular pack is Paradise Island. It's going to come with Caspian MC1, Marina MC1 batting, MC1 batting in oatmeal. We've got Merino top in Lagoon, Prairie, Sand Dollar, White Sand, and Tide Pool. We've got some Paradise Silk Hankies, some Mushroom Sorry Silk Waist, Bamboo, or not Bamboo, excuse me, Viscose Top <laughs> in White and Mint. We've got uh, Tussa Silk in Sand Dollar right here. Oh, oh, tried to escape there. <laughs> We've also got Wool Nuts in Lagoon and Kiwi. Merino Silk Blend in Kiwi. And some lovely locks hand dyed by Miss Fairy Kayla. <laughs> <laughs> Anne Franklin says, that does look like an island. And Joan Kilalea says, love the Paradise Island colors. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much, y'all. Thank you for spending this time with us. We hope you have a lot of fun. And next up is Fairy Lauren. Hey y'all, happy Wooly Wednesday. So if you're new to wet felting and you're looking for where to begin with fibers, this merino short fiber batting is the perfect place to start. We offer this in a goodie pack and what's great about the goodie pack is it comes with a variety of colors, at least 12, and that way you can have a full palette as you begin your wet felting. Um, this is a very fine fiber which is very easy to lay out and work with and with these colors again you can make beautiful creations. We have monochromes, earth tones, summer tones, berries, blues and greens, the whole nine yards. So if you're ready to get started wet felting right off the bat, <laughs> this is the perfect, this is perfect for you. Yeah, so I'm call one more time. It is merino short fiber batting. Yeah. Yes. Nice. I like cracked up on my own joke. There, so. <laughs> That's how you know it's good. Uh, up next, we have the wonderful fairy Holly. Woo! <laughs> Hi everyone! So when I make anything, I like lots of layers and texture. So um, today I've got a little assortment of different fibers that are great for surface interest or a little bit of bling, a little bit of sparkle. They go really well with the Paradise Island. Plus we've thrown in some little, little pops of color because that's always good. So we have, um, up here, we have the Happy Sheep Mix that is all hand dyed by Fairy Kayla. <laughs> and then we have the uh, Viscose Top in Kiwi. We have the Angelina in Wedgwood, the Tussa Silk in Paradise, and the Wool Neps in Lagoon. So if you're looking for these on our website, the Wool Neps have their own category and you can just search for that. The uh, Happy Sheep Mix, <laughs> Spring, Happy Sheep Spring Mix <laughs> is under uh, Locks, and then the Viscose Top and the Tessa Silk is under the Luster Luxury Fibers, and our Angelina is, also has its own category. And we have way more colors than just this, so you can go crazy. And now it's time for Fairy Kayla. <laughs> Yay! Thank you, Holly. Well done. Hi everyone, Fairy Kayla here. Hope you're having a great week so far. I'm kind of keeping up with the, the island theme that we've got going on and I'm sharing some complimentary colors in our 19 and a half, 100% merino pre-felt. So right here we have got kiwi, white, turquoise. Oh, am I hiding? And then brilliant blue, I, it was slipping away. <laughs> so the pre-felt is great for if you want to cut it into pieces and use it as inlays in your projects or if you even want to use it as a base layer in your own artful felt fabric. So yeah. <laughs> 
Okay, now I did have a joke prepared for you guys about a piece of paper, but it's just too terrible. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'll turn it back over to Marie before the big hook comes out. <laughs> Thank you! Can we get a big round of hearts for those fairies? I know that I just love having them here to frighten every day at Living Felt. For those of you who don't know, this is our crew. These are the gals who answer the phone. They answer your emails and your customer service requests. They are the ones who pick and pack your orders, and they're the ones who make all of the beautiful assortments and packs and kits that we sell. So, yeah, they are always that lovely to have around, and we sure do appreciate them. And we appreciate you too, y'all, so thank you so much for being here. So today is Felt Journal Day, and I know that we're working with paper and it's not really felt, but it's really fun to put the fibers th that you create into felt to work, and it's even a great thing to do with your samples Journal covers can be just any shape, but I wanted to more than just cover a book or something that we purchase, I wanted to give us a way to actually make the felt we make into a journal. And that's what we're going to be doing today. So the first thing we're gonna do is look at the fiber that we, the fabric that we created together and just finish the process of preparing it to be made into a journal cover. This is the piece that we actually felt it together last week. Uh, yeah, this is the actual one that we made, and there's the back side. So this is merino top, is all the dark blue base layer, and then the top is made out of handmade pre-felts that we made ourselves, some commercial pre-felts, uh, like Kayla just showed you that were felted in, and some of the luster and luxury fibers that you were shown also, along with some silk fabric. So if you're interested to make this, or if you're just stumbling across this, you're not really sure what we're talking about, this video right here is the one that we actually made this fabric, and then on that video, you're going to see links to the prior two videos that we did to create the pieces that make up the mosaic. Cool. So let's look really quickly at how this fiber shrunk. When we got off the show last time, I had just a little bit of shrinkage to do, and I did post that in our Facebook group, but let me show you where we were. This is where we started. This was the full size of our layout. You might remember we used a resist underneath our felting to gauge the size. Uh, so that's how big it was laid out dry. This was our target size right there, so we were able to shrink it down to our target size, which is a 30% um, shrinkage rate. And I think this is kind of an interesting viewpoint to kind of put it in the corner and see that all of this material shrunk into this little piece of fabric here. So really fun, and I know a lot of you shared your uh, fabrics that you made in our group, Living Felt Friends. So if you're brand new to us, this is our group. This is where we hang out all week long. So I hope you'll check us out there and you can see things that other people have felted beyond the fabric, uh, but a lot of people share the fabric that they made there. So once your fabric is finished, felted, rinsed, and you've done a vinegar soak, then we're gonna steam press our fabric so that it gets a really nice finish on it. That's the next thing we're going to do. So I have my little ironing pad here and let's just look at that. Okay, so this is what our fabric looks like. And what we wanna do is take what are some of these, um, this finish and just give it a nice press cause it's gonna make it look really nice. And my iron is hot and ready to go. And I'm just gonna, get that steam coming out. And you can spray it if you want to. Spraying it with water is fine to give it a kick start. And we just want to give it a really nice press. Here's my irons juicing up right now. Now if you are concerned about um, applying too much heat to any of the fibers that you have on here, then you can just use a little presser cloth. But when you press your fabric before you use it, and there's no starch or anything on it, you can take this opportunity to do what's called blocking, and that is if there's little edges that you want to bring them out just a little bit more, well then go ahead and tug on them when you've done the steaming. It's not going to weaken the fabric. As a matter of fact, it's going to strengthen the fabric because as you pull against those fibers, they kind of lock on each other a little more tightly. So steam press your fabric. You can press it from both sides if you like. My little ironing mat is shedding. 
Okay, here we go. We got some good steam flowing now. So just go ahead and give it a really nice press. And that is going to give your felted goods a really nice, beautiful finish if you give it a nice press. Um, what else do I want to tell you on this? Basically, that's the idea, is you want to press it, get all of the little, you know, ripples kind of smoothed out. And some of that texture you're going to like, but this is going to give you a really nice polished surface. Um, I think that looks nice. What do you guys think? Karen says this whole series has been so much fun. Thank you so much for sharing it. <laughs> it's been my pleasure. I love wet felting. I kind of, I go in phases where I just only want to wet felt or I only want a needle felt. But one thing's for sure, once you learn how to wet felt, once you can make your own fabric, just honestly, the world's your oyster when it comes to creating and crafting because you can create things that are truly, truly one of a kind. And uh, felting is still, is still kind of novel in a lot of places. You don't see a lot of handmade felt fabric as you're out shopping in the world. And that's because it takes a real investment in time. And some people aren't willing to, you know, to put in that effort. But it's really fun. Cool. Okay. Let me get into a position here because we're going to cut some paper. We're going to, let's look at first some of the supplies. So one of the first things we're going to look at is um, a selection of paper and maybe you have some papers already available at home or you can beg borrow and steal from your friends and loved ones that's what I did <laughs> that is absolutely what I did okay so I have here a collection of papers I'm going to share with you and I want to encourage you to raid your closets, raid your drawers, even maybe raid some of your keepsake boxes and then knock on your friend's door, your neighbor's door, your husband's door in my case <laughs> and a friend's door and Fairy Ann contributed a bit to this as well and then there are some things you can buy uh, when you're shopping also if you want. Uh, you can buy some things. So let's look at what I have here. I'll just look at a few things. This tray may not be doing us much justice. The camera doesn't love the white uh, paper anyway. It doesn't love the, the whites, but I'll take that away and see how that does. Thank you. Okay, so I have a collection of papers here, and I just want to encourage you to be creative first and dig around your house. Um, these are here. This is a little artist trading card that I bought a pack of years ago. It's got like a little window and um, a little slide through. This will be fun for a pocket. Envelopes will make fun pockets. Um, here's another artist trading card, but this one I put a little piece of plastic in so we have a little window. I think I'll use that today. An empty note card. Surely you have a box of note cards and thank you cards laying around that you can kind of repurpose or put to use if it's sitting empty. This is just another little envelope and I like it because it has a torn edge on it so I thought that was sweet. Um, paper scraps are absolutely open and then you, you can empty old journals. So these are just pages from old journals. So some are plain and vanilla. This one has dots on it. This one is more of like a card stock. These are just multiple little pages. So getting a variety can be really fun, a variety of different lines. And it doesn't matter what size they are. We can cut them all down to fit. These pages are from a rather large journal. And I was telling Anne that what's so fun about this, this paper for me is that this is a journal, it's a really big book that I've had for many years, and the earliest uh, floor plans for Living Felt, <laughs> now our permanent home, were drawn in this journal, and tons of tutorials that we have done over the years. I think I've had that journal at least since 2010, but maybe before. And uh, sometimes I'll skip pages, so those pages became available. So raid old journals, and don't worry about whether they're plain, or they have lines, or they don't all match. That's going to make it more fun. Let me just show you a few more papers here. These are scrapbook papers, and I went with a blue theme today. That's kind of going with what I have. More, more, more papers. These I got from my husband. He had a music tab book, and I really liked the music notes on the side. So anything that will add interest. And if you don't find interesting things, don't worry about it because you can add the interest yourself. You might have some specialty papers, and these are delicate, but I don't mind. I like, I like the sound. So these are some handmade papers. Um, absolutely beautiful. 
little threads and you know things running through them. These are mulberry silk papers actually. And here's a light blue one. So you might have a, one or two special of these in there. I even brought in some vellum and cardstock, um, whatever colors you like, plain paper, and then more scrapbook paper. Now, for these supplies and pretty much everything I'm using today, if I purchased it from somewhere, then we included a link to it in the description. You can check that out if you want. We don't have a PDF download for today's lesson uh, at the moment, um, but everything is in that description. So if there's anything you see that you're looking for, if you don't see the link in the description, just message us and I'll um, tell you where I got it. So a lot of this stuff just came from my craft drawers uh, from, as I said, from friends or family, and then there's a few things that I bought. And I wanna encourage you, if you do shop like on Michaels or something, I got, I picked up a couple of these like mini scrapbook books, and this one, which is like a sea glass theme, I'm pretty sure I paid less than $2 for this because it was in their clearance section. And you can get a lot of stuff, you know, just from the clearance. This is a better, weight than the big sheets that I bought. When you're buying online, it can be difficult to know. Um, and these are all recollections, which I'm pretty sure, the, I don't know if the, that's a Michaels brand or what, but, and then here's another little fun one, and I didn't pay very much for that either. So sometimes if maybe you're ordering online with them and you need to up your order to take advantage of their coupon, maybe think about something like this, because whether you're making handmade cards or journals or whatever, sometimes you can pay just a couple of bucks and get something that'll last you a long, long time. Okay, so I'm gonna pause. I'm gonna select my papers out, uh, but the last thing I wanna say about papers is to save your scraps. And I'm gonna show you ways that you can use your scraps, but save your scraps. Even the lined uh, book scraps can be fun for little page accents when you wanna just change up the texture on a page. And now some of you are probably way more either scrapbook experienced or paper experienced than me and have some great tips. So don't be shy about sharing those because I'm not really a paper person. I was always, mm, I don't know, just a dabbler until I found felt and that is my second love, third love. <laughs> <laughs> my husband's my first. All right, so I'm gonna set my scraps aside and we're gonna prepare some of these papers. Before I jump into this, do we have anything, Anne, that I should address? Any questions or anything? No questions. Everyone's super excited about rating their paper stash. <laughs> Fun. Yeah, y'all. I, I hope you will. I hope you dig in there and see what you can find. Okay, so I'm going to select some papers. What we're going to be making is called a register. And um, I always call it a register. It's called a signature. My brain, I turn, you swaps those two words. We're making a signature. So let's look at a signature and then at least just one, and then I'll bring my papers back in for us to look at. So a signature is a, um, a collection of papers that you put together. And for this journal, I'm actually gonna only have two. We'll make one together. And you could have eight pages, 10 pages, 12 pages. You could have a journal that only has one, but in this case, I'm going to make two. So this is an example of making them, you have surfaces to write on. I like blank surfaces to write on. The pages can be a different size and that makes it fun. Uh, one page could just be inspiration, um, but I like having things overlap that are a little bit eclectic. Here's my mulberry paper reinforced with other papers and um, more pages in between. So this little journal, or this little signature has a lot of writing surfaces in it. And this is even a greeting card, which actually was gifted to me by Fairy Ann's mom, who does Stampin' Up. And I found that in my, my craft drawer. I was so excited. An envelope as a little pocket a page with some accents on it. We'll do some of that together. And then another little pocket. So this is like one register and your books could have, your journals could have two or three registers in it. But, but today we're gonna show you how to make the binding for two registers in your journal. So I've shown you a collection of the papers. You're gonna want to raid your stash for that. But before we start cutting our papers and things, what we want to do is prepare our journal to receive the papers. So we're going to move over. This is the journal we're going to be working with today. And just for the moment, I'm going to tuck my papers aside. 
do this. And what this has in it is a is an elastic binding that we actually slide the signatures into. So the signatures are loose and we make them all up and then we slide them in just like this. What do I do with the other one? And you don't even have to sew them. You could if you want and there's other ways to do journal um, pages and I have to look for um, I'd have to see whether we have time to do another form of binding, but this is a really fun form of binding where you can trade out the pages over time or you can add to the pages over time. So that's what we're going to make today is we'll make a signature together and let's prepare our cover for that binding. So in order to prepare the cover for the binding, uh, one of the first things we need is we need to be able to measure it and we need to be able to put holes in the binding. I'm going to show you a couple of ways to put holes in your binding. If I can find it. Okay. So here's a couple of tools that you'll want. You'll want, at the minimum, you want an awl. You could call it a pokey tool. You want an awl. It would help to have a needle uh, that is kind of big or at least cording that will go through the holes that you make. And if you don't have an awl or if you have one of these, it's called a, it's by We Are Memory Keepers and this is in the description, uh, in the description over there. And it's actually a snap setter tool, but it, um, or an eyelet setter tool, but it pokes big holes. I'm gonna see if I can get in on this and I'm gonna show you uh, how we make a hole with this thing because I really like it. And I'll show you how to make a hole with this also. We'll do both. So what we want is our signature is gonna sit right in here and one of the first things we want to do is find the middle. And let's see if I can show you this. We wanna find the middle of this and you wanna be able to mark it. So it really helps to have a marking tool and this is the elastic we're going to use for the binding. It's a two millimeter round elastic. Again, all of this stuff is in the description. You doing okay? All right. So we want to find the middle of our book. Once you've ironed it's pressed, you know where it is. And what we're going to do is put holes in the spine that are just off center. We're going to be putting two holes in that basically the back so that we can feed our cord through there. Let's find the middle, and I'm just gonna mark that. This pen, this is just a jelly roll pen. I didn't put this in the description, but it's just a jelly roll pen. And what I wanna do is go about a quarter inch off of that center line. Sorry, my real estate here is so busy. You can see that okay? Can y'all see? And I'm gonna come in, I wanna come in about a half inch also. So I'm gonna come down, I'm gonna eyeball it about a half inch, and then off that center line, I'm going to go a quarter inch. And y'all please let us know if we need to zoom in if, or if you can see okay. This pen is like, just to put a dot. Can we zoom in a little? Okay, let me zoom in and let me see if I can just get us. Oh, hopefully you're not sick now. <laughs> Whoa, that's a little fast. Okay, let me come kind of to the middle here. So I've drawn my line in the center there, and then we want to just put a quarter inch line on either side. And all I need is a little dot. I just need enough to see where that hole is going to go. And that's kind of high up there. What did I do about? Yeah, I came about a half inch down. So you can draw that line across and then mark your point so you know exactly where you're gonna make those holes. And let's do the same thing here. So we'll come up about a half inch and then we'll go a quarter inch off. Just make it that long. A quarter inch off of that line. And you can play with this. If you wanna play with how it works, Get your, you know, getting your measurements where you like it. Do it in cardstock, which is how I like to do it when I'm pre-making, uh, when I'm sewing the registers anyway, is just use cardstock. Now, 
If you have an awl, you can simply just poke your holes with the awl, and I like using my foam. So let's make our first holes with the awl, and all you have to do is just put it right in there and poke it, poke it down. That's all we have to do is just poke it down. Now I do like to, um, I do like to make a template, but you don't have to. If you're just going to make one, you can just poke the holes just like that. Now, if you have this magical tool, not this one, this one, if you have this magical tool, what's cool about it is you see these guides right here? This allows you to measure how far you want to go something. And when you squeeze the handle, so I can move this out of the way, when you squeeze the handle, these spikes or these poles come down and they make holes. So this, this one does a half inch and this one does, um, I don't know, a one eighth. So this one does one eighth and this one does three sixteenths of a hole. So I'm going to make a hole. I'm not, if I make one in paper, I'll do it in my fabric first and then I'll make one in paper so you can see. And what's cool is there's a little um, visual guide right here that you can see where your dot is or your line is and then it just pokes right through and it'll poke it out. I love that it works on the felt. So I'm going to go back over my top holes and you can just cut these away here. So now I have two holes in my fabric right there. And I'm going to go back and do this one. I did the bigger, the bigger holes. Okay, there we go. So now we have two holes that we can feed our, let me get my scissors. Lots of scissors and cutty tools. <laughs> and we're done with that. That was its only purpose. But it, it also helps you set little eyelets. So if you want, you could put eyelets on these. And um, I may end up doing that, but here I'm going to show you. This is an eyelet set into my Artful Felt fabric. You see that right there. So you can also use that same tool to set an eyelet. And if you want something that's a little more permanent, you can do that. Just test it on a test piece of felt first and see if it fits for you. Okay, so then we're going to take our cording, whatever you have. You know, you could use ribbon or whatever you like, but elastic is going to allow us to do the stretchy bit. We'll come out a little bit. We don't need to be quite so close. And you want to make it, you know, make it at least two and a half times as long, and then we can cut off the excess. So I'm just going to make it about three, and you can always cut off the excess when you're done. Now, if your cord will go right through, then that's fine. And if it will go right through the hole, and then you just need to decide where you want that tail. Remember when I showed you this, I'm gonna cut this tail off when I'm all done, but you can have a tail on the inside or outside. Some people like to put beads or charms on this, and I'm not going to. Mine's gonna be on the inside and I'll just cut it. But wherever you want your tail is where you start feeding your thread. So uh, you'll go from the inside, in this case we're going to go to the inside out, and then we'll feed this through and leave ourselves uh, leave ourselves something to tie with. I always like to give myself more than I need. And then we're just going to thread it around and come up this side. And then through the bottom we do the same thing. We're just going to go in here. If I can find my hole. I made a huge one. <laughs> there it is. Just go in the, through that bottom and then come back this way a little bit. Right through that hole. Okay, so now when we tie this, this is so, so simple, it's easy peasy. When we tie this, you want it to be a little snug so that it's pulling the book up a little bit because that's going to give you resistance so that your book fits more snugly and is not really slack in there. And you know what's fun about this, especially if you just get this stuff, you can't get it wrong. Do it, see how you like it, undo it. Leave yourself enough, like don't even cut that elastic yet until you get your registers in there and make sure that you like that tension. So leave it like that for now and when we get there, we're gonna put our registers inside of that. So 
Like I said, you can untie it, you can redo it, you can make your hole smaller, bigger, you can reinforce your holes. The thing about making a really good, strong, handmade felt is it will not fray. If you cut your felt and it just starts to come apart, well then you might want to go back and felt it a little bit more and make it more durable. But if you're pretty happy with your felt and you still want to reduce the stress on those holes, one know that once the book is stretched back open, it'll be pretty good. But um, what you can do is you can hand stitch them around them if you want, or you could put something like the eyelets. Just make the holes a little smaller in the first place. You could also put some uh, fabric hardener on there or some kind of fray check, something just to stiffen those holes a little bit. Um, but your felt should be pretty strong and be able to hold up to that whatever we're doing for it. So just on that note, let's go ahead and put in one register, uh, one signature, see I'm still doing it, but one signature, and then we will um, make the second one. But just so you can see, and this will also illustrate the point that I'm about to share with you, um, is we have to decide how big the signatures, how tall the signatures are going to be, and that's why we did this part first. Uh, so it can dictate how tall we want our registers. And I think this book, this book cover, journal cover that I made is a little bit shorter than the first one, um, but it's also wider. So here's uh, this one, and we'll just find the middle and slide it through. And what I found with this method of using this elastic binding is I think that it's a good idea to use your firmer, to have a firmer cardstock on the, uh, on the maybe the outside of the signature so that it doesn't get beat up, and maybe on the inside too. So when you look at this, and I'll turn this down here, we want those elastics either just on the outside of the signature or just like on the inside so that it's not too much of a stretch. I'll come in just a little bit. So this one is a pretty good fit. And you can see now where the, the cover was bowing now, it's laying pretty good. So it's, it's puckering a little bit, so I can just back off my tension a little bit. And that's why we wanna do this, so you can figure out how big to make them. So I will just loosen my tension a slight bit so that the book is not under stress while the register, the signature, <laughs> I love how the, uh, the captions for this video is going to look. So that the um, signature is not stressed and your fabric is not stressed, but you also don't want it so loose that they're flopping all over the place. We just want to get it right in there. Cool. All right, so let's make one, and that's nice. Um, all right, so let's let's make one. Let's look at some of our papers. I'm gonna bring some papers in and zoom out one more time so we're not too, too close. There we go. All right, so for this, the first thing I'd like to do is maybe uh, start choosing some papers. I'm gonna use this card, I think. I think, you know, this oh, things I wanna choose from, some of these little pieces. But let's see how to work with pages of varying sizes and various textures. I will make the outside of this a cardstock because I want it to be nice and strong. So let's choose one of those. I like these patterned papers. I don't like to overuse them because this side is so blank. You have to decorate it uh, when you get to that point. I will use my um, music papers. I think I'm gonna make this about eight pages. I will use my this particular one, which is important to me. I'll bring in some lined paper and maybe some extra. I'm going to set some of these aside and I'll have a couple of more so we count. And then I think I'll bring in also a, a pretty paper. I'll bring in one of those because I haven't used this before. And then some plain paper. And then everything else we'll just decide. Even I have vellum and stuff like that. We'll just see how we feel. And you can start pretty easily. You can make a lot of the pages the same size and then just vary some of the pages in between. So this is kind of a quickie method to go about it. I'm gonna set these guys aside and show you what I mean. So let's start with these since they're all very similar. I would just fold these in half so that each of them is 
already well um, divided. This paper we're going to tear, actually, or texture. We can tear or texture. And the cardstock is going to be like a supporting, a supporting guy. I don't have a lot of rhyme or reason for this. Some of y'all probably have very well thought out ways of going about this. I just sort of put them together and then see how I like it. I do like to look at these patterns and think if I were writing on this page or if it's even the backdrop for a writing page, how do I want those scallops or that design to look? So I'm going to fold this one in half. He's going to get cut down significantly. And I think I'll put him in between. See, sometimes I don't like a white page next to a white page, so we'll look at decorating those. So we'll get some of these guys together, but let's start looking at uh, this one as well. And we'll keep building these pages. I love these music tabs, and I want them to show when you get to the page, I want to see them. So that means we're going to be cutting away. See, I'm going to turn it over. When I cut it, I want to cut this off to salvage this. So I'm going to put this this way and this this way. And what we're going to do then is join these together so that they become a big double page. And how we do that, or how I'm going to do that, is with washi tape. And um, washi tape, man, is just so fun. So I have, I know this is kind of dim. Uh, my camera does not love the white. Um, Washi tape, I got I got washi tape from a few different places, so these little bitty ones I got from Amazon. They're not super strong, but they're really fun and a big collection for not a lot of money. And then these I got from Michaels, and they cost a significant amount more <laughs> compared, but they're, little, they're stronger and they don't tear. So for your larger pages or your larger joins, you usually probably want like a wider tape. And... That's all we really have to do is we can just join one side and then cut off the extra tape. Um, this, this part will be in the middle, obviously, the part that's sticking over. Oh, I wasn't thinking. Haha, <laughs> all that for nothing. I want to save this. I want to save this part and not this part. So what I need to do actually is cut this down first. That's funny. I'm not going to be able to rip off the, uh, the washi tape. So let me do that. I want to cut this guy down. And actually, I've decided I want him to be shorter. So uh, this is something I've already figured out. We'll just get to do that twice is all that's going to happen. And this width is just over five inches. I want this guy to be maybe one, two, three, four. I'm gonna let him be four and a half inches wide. So let's look at what I mean by that. I'm gonna cut this down here. Sorry about that. Waste of good washi tape. <laughs> okay. So I'm gonna let this thing be four inches wide. Um, uh, four and a half inches wide, and then we'll rejoin that end there. I like using my um, my rotary cutters for when I'm just cutting smaller amounts, sometimes even thick amounts. This is a really pretty strong rotary color cutter that I've enjoyed using, especially on paper, except I'm sitting, and apparently I can't cut when I sit. <laughs> Okay, so let's rejoin that because I think that that was an important join and I don't really need uh, the whole thing joined, but how tall do we want it to be? And you can think also um, when you, that's funny. Um, you can think also when you make these where you want the cuts to be, like I don't want those little words to be down below. And I think I would like this thing to be about this tall. So if I want it to be about that tall, do you want the do you want to leave the header open or you know what? How do you want it? These things do not all need to be a uniform size, and I think that makes it really fun when you're putting your journals together is that it's a little bit eclectic. So I'll take that off. I realize I lost my music side on the other one. And so let's just join this again. One side will have the music symbols and one side won't. So washi tape. Do y'all use washi tape? We don't have much use for washi tape in felting. 
but this is a fun way to kind of bring it in. <laughs> oh, yeah. Our, our felting friends are all about the washi tape. Are you guys <laughs> all about the washi yeah. tape? <laughs> it's fun. It's a fun way to add to add accents to things. I really have been enjoying it. Let me put my knife aside. Okay, so I've got this little paper. I'm going to tuck him in somewhere, but... You know, here's something that's fun about this. You've got this really plain paper. Well, this uh, rotary tool that I just showed you that I was working with, it came with a variety of blades, and I put uh, one of those blades on my Fiskars. See how uh, ripply this one is? And it just adds a little bit of interest to just take off that, take off the very edge. Let's see if I got it. I'll go one more time to take off that edge and give it a little bit of decorative edge. And then if you put that against a darker colored paper, it's gonna look super duper cute when it's in the, when it's in the book. So I'm gonna put it backwards. I always seem, seem to design these from giving the front more interest than the back, you know? <laughs> and, and so here, it could go right in here. So that'll be different. So when you turn it over, the back will be, the back will be pretty. So there's that. We're, we got this going now. Let's make a few more um, joined pages so that we have some little ones and we'll mix up our tape a little bit. And we'll do more than, more than just joining pages, but let's get a couple of these done. What are some, I, did some people sharing some ideas also, Anne? Oh, yes. Pamela is going to make a journal to keep recipes in. <gasps> yeah. Oh, that's a great idea for recipes. Sorry, I'm struggling with my washi tape. Let's see. I found this delicate little tape. I just want to give you this tip. On this delicate little tape that tends to tear on you, just get it started and then guide it back like this because it wants to rip off unevenly very readily. And I found a little more success with the cheap washi tape when you go that route instead of trying to hold it because I seem to rip it askew every time. I'm holding it. Now, so this is another little page. Let's see what else we got. We can break this up from here to here. So this is plain. This is just like almost like a decorative page. Bring this guy in. How many do we have? One, two, three, if we put something on this. Four, five, six. I definitely want something in the middle that's littler. Uh, oh, we'll have to use one of these guys for sure. And I like these to be on the outside. They were in the middle of my big journal, but I like them to be on the outside. I'll put one of my, my big tapes. Which one did I use already? I used this one. It doesn't much matter. I thought this might be a good idea. Um, so many of us, you know, we... Maybe sometimes you get down on yourself. You're not loving yourself as much as you could or would benefit from. And I know you get love notes, whether even if it's a birthday note or a message from a friend or even from a customer, um, anybody, of just a friend online, maybe a Facebook friend online. Uh, you get an email, you get little love notes. I thought it might be a really fun way to kind of start to gather some of your love, love notes and keep them in one place so that each time you get one, it would almost cause you to go back and visit the book. I know that's something that um, I like to do. I really like to save love notes that I get. I was telling Anne that some of them I pin on my board. They're from my, some of my closest friends are always you know, gonna give me a card that I find uplifting and I always pin it on that board. So I thought maybe this would be a fun way to save some little love notes and you at least would get to revisit it every time you add to it which I think is kind of cool. Well, Carol shares that she's going to make one to make as a, a mini memoir for her daughter. Oh. Marina's making one and, and going to take one on a trip to a, a upcoming trip to a national park. Oh, that sounds so great. Yeah, a little trip, a little trip journal. So you're going to need pockets and stuff in there. Okay, so here's one way to go about this process is once you kind of have your pages together, the things that you, you think you want to use, is you can just center all of the pages in this little signature how you want them, and then you can cut the whole thing at one time. It's kind of a fast way to go about it, or you could take your time 
and cut them all separately. Because we've put all these little and varied sizes within there, it's still gonna have a lot of interest. And again, I wanna look and see what was the size of this one. You might wanna find one or just cut a single piece of cardstock and get it to the size you want it and put it within your book and then you'll know that you're in the right place. You don't have to make the whole signature to know. So for me, the largest size of this signature is five and a half. And I'll tell you how big my book is too. Is five and a half by seven and a smidge. <laughs> <laughs> it's like seven and three quarters, but it's more of a smidge. Okay, and this book at best is nine by the folded size, the folded size six, nine by six, which is what I remember we, we were shooting for, nine by six. So again, it is five and a half by, I think I said seven and three quarters. Yeah, at best, seven and three quarters. So we're going to cut this signature. Yeah. Five and a half by seven and three quarters. Five and a half by seven and three quarters. Five and a half by seven. <laughs> I have a tendency to mix up numbers. Now I'm going to start with this. If I look at it, yep. I'm going to put it on. Like I'm going to cut off this little. I'm going to cut off this little extra here, and I'll show you. I like to start on a number so I don't have to do math and counting. Let's see if this will work. Okay, I'm gonna turn you back so you can see what I got here. All right, so I wanna cut this to seven and three quarters long, and what I'm going to do is cut from here. See how this, this is how I like to use my cutting mat. This is my 10 line. This big bold line right here is my 10. So then I don't have to count, and I know that I can just come all the way over here to seven and three quarters. Just get all of your stuff really straight, and you wanna use your, the cutting tools that are uh, best gonna support you. Um, for this and I'm going to go ahead and use that um, same rotary tool. I just need to stand up to do it so I can put my, my body weight into it. You want to really, if you're going to cut it all at the same time, you could use something like this and maybe I'll show you on part. This I love this little finger tool, but you want to really be able to squish your stuff down and for that these quilting rulers are awesome because they usually have some kind of no grippy surface on the back uh, that keep things from sliding around and um, you can put a lot of weight on them safely. We even have a big handle for ours, don't we, Ann? A big mm -hmm. squishy handle you can put down. So just don't move it and go over it until you know that your stuff is cut. And just scoot away, yay, all at once. <laughs> I could get into paper, scarily enough. One more thing to add to my life. Now, you don't have to move this, but I don't like to cut to my left. I never feel safe cutting to my left, so I'm gonna spin it around and put it just back on my 10 line there, right there, and I'll use that top line to look. And um, now I'll show you the other tool. This I know is the seven and three quarters because I matched the top of this to that. So this little finger uh, cutter I really love because you hold it like this, and then you can just drag it down. It's awesome. I love this thing. Yeah, Lori wants to know what exactly is that called? This little finger tool? Mm -hmm. I, I think it's it's like a Fiskars finger cutter and I have linked to this in the description. Um, I got it on Amazon. I'm a serious Amazon shopper these days, y'all. Scary, I know, but it's true, I love them. Okay, um, now we said five and a half, right? Five and a half. So again, coming off my 10 line, that makes it so easy. And this is this is there. This is right there. That's five and a half. So I'm just going to scoot everybody down so I know that they're where I want them. And this cardstock is already there. So only a couple of the things are kind of sticking over a little bit. So we'll cut those down. And we're going to be practically there. It's amazing. I don't worry about if every page is all perfect. I'm not a very, um, I'm not a big perfectionist when it comes to stuff like this. So let's see how we're doing and let's just dress up. I just want to share with you a few ideas for dressing up uh, some of these pages and we might cut a few more things, but let's look at it really fast. So we open it up, we have a little bit of interest here, we have a unique paper here, some pretty lines inside, more stuff to write on. I like it. I don't know if it's eight, I think it is eight pages, yeah. And then all of these things are a little bit different. So we have a lot of writing surfaces. I think we could use a pocket. So, and we could just stick one of our note cards on right away. So this is a fun way to use these things. 
um, meaning your card stock, you could put a paper writing surface on that or you could really use that. This, what's fun about this little um, artist frame, it's a, it's a little artist trading card frame, is you can slide something in here a keepsake but you could also write on both of these surfaces right here so there's a couple of things you can use you can use standard glue we have Aileen's tacky glue would hold up this is just a regular um, PVA glue for book binding if you have something really thick and uh, thick that you feels a little resistant you can use um, double-sided sticky tape like if something you're going to be moving around a lot you can use a double-sided sticking tape and really hold it in place I'll use this uh, for the moment uh, this particular roll of tape was a gift from Fairy Kayla's mom. So I have something in here from Fairy Kayla's mom, <laughs> from Anne, Fairy Anne, from Fairy Anne's mom, from my husband, from me. Who else? Maybe somebody. It's kind of fun, you know, to think about all these different uh, people contributing to something like a journal. It's way better than just something store bought, you know? Oh, yeah. And I'm not worried about these going in any particular directions. I just want enough stick them on there that if I open this thing out, um, it's not going to immediately come off. I love this double sticky tape. It's very thin. It was given to me uh, by Rebecca, Fairy Kayla's mom, for um, kind of positioning a zipper. <laughs> and so far, I have found a lot of uses. <laughs> This thing that she gave me, this double sticky tape. I think we used it in another tutorial. Oh, I know. I better replace it before I before I run out of it because I won't know what to do without it. We used it for something, Anne. Yeah, we did. Okay, there we go. So now I got all my double sticky tape on there. So this is fun because this becomes a little a little collection. Maybe you put a photo in here or a note card. Um, you can accent the page some more. So that accents that page. Here's, I have another um, envelope. An envelope is a great little pocket. So why don't we put the envelope on the inside here? Little, I get a nod from Anne. Anne's mom uh, is a paper crafter. I, I mentioned to you, she does Stampin' Up. And um, so Anne, therefore, always hand makes our cards here and we always get something like it's got a little window and glitter in it and oh, little yeah. cutouts so um i will use the pva glue on this just to change things up this stuff is really liquidy i think compared to like school glue yeah. <laughs> which i like I, actually i'm not going to use the pva glue i'm going to use my glue stick love my glue stick Blue stick comes stuck, comes unstuck. So over here I have this little, um, I just like having a little wax paper. I thought about, which we used in one of our recent tutorials, I thought about putting some of this in my journal because I like the noise. <laughs> I like how it feels. I like the noise. Okay, there we go. Here's a little envelope. You can dress up every page as much as you want. I thought the note cards, I really liked having the note cards, and it's maybe good for one of these blank, uh, these blank pages. It could go this way or that way. I kind of like it this way. Then it becomes a double writing surface in your journal like this. Now, if you glue on these really thin papers, uh, then you have to put something on the opposite side. So let's put this one on first. I'll glue him on first. And I really look forward to seeing your journals, as usual. I love seeing what you all make from these tutorials and hope that, even though we're not felting today, you think it's a, a good use of time to make something together from your handmade felt fabric. And now here, on this side, I'm going to put a thicker cardstock. This, I think, is absolutely perfect. This came from you, Anne. This was from oh, your family's yeah. collection. And that looks like a little castle in there, is it? Mm -hmm. Like a, a castle... She gave me some fairy, they were fairy themed, and I thought they were so fairy that I needed to save them for another journal. Do y'all do that? Like, have something and it's so special that you just keep saving it and saving it? <laughs> and saving it. All the time. <laughs> God, I put this stuff to work. Okay, so I'm going to put this in here. And we're gonna do we're gonna do a little more decoration too. So so far we've we've mixed up our papers. We've put in some pockets. I picked up some trash from the table. Here we go. We've cut a decorative edge. 
Um, this big thing right here, so this paper might, might seem like you can't write on it. You could certainly add something to it later. Um, let's see, I'm going to just put a piece of paper on top of it. I think I've saved a couple back here something a little more um, like a little more of a cardstock paper but you can also um, cut edges if you want you know you can uh, scallop the edges of your stuff and shape the edges of things in the interest of time I'll use tapes that I know work so a little more washi tape and we'll put this um, we'll just get this guy in place and all I'm doing is creating a writing surface I just want to create another writing surface in my journal. Oh, Patricia says, this is so cool, I need to make one. <laughs> I have really found them very therapeutic to make. I think they would make really nice gifts. It would be a really nice way to do a card for somebody. One year, my husband, who um, is amazing, by the way, hello, Rodney Jean, I'm sure you're like in the studio and not really listening. But one year um, for my birthday, my husband filled a journal as much as he could with all these things that like he loved about me. And so it was this beautiful journal of handmade papers, just all these, and then the rest of the pages I was supposed to fill. I'm sure I never did because then I'd like ruin the card <laughs> he gave me, but don't tell. <laughs> uh, last year, if you didn't see, he gave me, he made me a pair of shoes which was my birthday card. Very colorful. They're on my Instagram, oh, by the way. Okay, so I think what I'll do, I know that I could keep decorating all these pages, but in the interest of time, let's look at just a couple of other ways that you can um, decorate your pages. Uh, just something to, to think about. And I'll turn down here. So rem what we need for this, remember, we need stuff to cut. We need adhesives. We've used our glue stick. We've got the PVA glue. We've got the washi tape. Um, you need decorative items, which the washi tape classifies for as well. Um, but then you might decorate your pages just a little bit, whether they're for you or for someone else, and look at how you bring those together. So for that, I brought just a couple of things you might think about. And I brought um, stamps, and I brought these cool little fabric. I don't think I put these, these fabric castells. I definitely got those at, uh, at Michael's. They're like fun little colorful things. So you might think about adding a stamp or two on your pieces. This is this interesting bird fish. And so it might just give you a way to dress up a otherwise uh, blank page and give it a little bit of an interest or a theme. Um, this one, I got these little stencils. This is another add-on that I got at Michael's. I needed like a dollar or something. <laughs> I was having some storage bins delivered. Uh, I've been working on redoing my studio and um, these little stencils were a little add-on. So a stencil might be a fun way. You can also do magazine cutouts if you want. Oh, this is blue, isn't it? I don't care, I'm putting, <laughs> I don't care. Pink is my, is my color. Um, but you can just have a little stencil in there. Anyway, it was just another little cheapy add-on. Um, and these little things, they come with a little, a little brush. Um, you can smear, they're like a little waxy crayon, basically. And I'm not worried about it being perfect. So they come with a brush, and I'm letting some of my blue get in there. Um, or they come with these little rubber, uh, little rubby, smeary blender tools and you can get them all in there. So you might decorate pages with magazine cutouts or inks or stamps or your own drawings. I'm gonna see if I can get this guy in there. Try it, don't move. <laughs> don't move, don't move. And I look forward to your, your um, insights too because I'm, like I said, I'm not very experienced with, I'm experienced with journaling. So I've been journaling for many, many years but I journal a lot um, of either my thoughts, um, thoughts, ideas, affirmations, and I've just been doing that for a, a long, 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 long time. My husband and I both, and we talked about how much that's contributed to where we are and what we've been able to realize in our lives and the beautiful people it's brought to us like the Living Felt Fairies. Aww. True that. I wrote in my journal, Miss Ann, long before we met, how much I loved the people that we worked with and were around all the time. And that was part of, 
some of the pages that is in this journal too. So uh, here's a quick top down of my little, sorry, here's my little, my little imperfect mushroom accent. And maybe I'll just rub some of that off so it doesn't smear. Um, so think about accenting your pages, whether it's with stamps, whether it's with stencils, whether it's with a washi tape or cards or other additions. There's really no rules. The most important thing would be that you find a way to personalize it and make it how you want. So let me clean up my stuff here and then let's try it in our little journal and see how we like it. And um, this actually, I'm gonna, I will find a way to accent this probably with some more word cutouts and things, but we've probably proven the point now that we don't have to, um, we can see all the ways. You can even flip this around and use this part on the front. I think, uh, I'll just put it right here. I'll put the one we made together in front. So we'll find the middle and slide it through. So again, you can really add things to your journals in this way, add pages. You can add entire pages to your journals in this way. And you can also keep using the cover and you could retire these registers for something else. So this is just a little elastic binding um, for your journal. Look at all the fun little things we have. So And so many things still to decorate, right? So many th pages we can still decorate and add on to. I'm just going to flip through it real fast. My mushroom is becoming a mess. <laughs> oh, Devin shares, it would be so much fun to make some art felt, more art felt paper, cut it into shapes and glue it on the pages. Oh, that sounds like a nice idea. This is some of that mulberry silk uh, paper. Um, more, just a little note, just keep swimming. I definitely say that to myself from Dory. Just keep <laughs> swimming. Pages don't have to all be the same size. You can just have a little accent in here like that and then we're back to the middle. Um, I think the one thing I didn't add and maybe I'd like to just real quick now that I look at this is, what's that? Oh, I have this little heart paper. So something you can do I, that I think is really fun is add a little tab, especially to a short page. So let me cut this out real fast. This is just a little heart and I'll zoom in on it in a second. But add a little, a little tab to the end of a page. I think there's more ideas than we could probably cover. And your tab can be square like this or this is another one of those cool tools. It's a, it's a crocodile and it will punch out a corner for you and round your corner instantly. Your felt has to be really good felt in order for it to um, to punch through your felt, but it would definitely work like on the commercial felt. Well, that might be fun right there on the on the opening. I'm gonna put it. I like to have them on a short page because I think it really breaks it up. If you have it on a short page, then it kind of sticks over and adds a little contrast. So that's gonna be my final offering before I uh, take it home and finish it up. Oh, Sue shares, this would be such a great project with kids to help oh, encourage journaling. God, that's such a great idea, Sue. Okay, so let's look just before we switch off here. Now I know there's lots of ideas for closures um, and as well as uh, I should say that, you know, my goal with this journal would be I would like to add an inside fabric that's been reinforced with a little Pellon, some of the stiffier stuff, um, so that it just is a little more rigid. You don't have to, but it might be a little more satisfying to fold back these pages. In that case, you can um, adhere the Pellon to the fabric, tuck the corners under, and then top stitch. I'd probably top stitch in a very dark blue so that it doesn't show, um, but you wanna do that before you add your holes if you're gonna reinforce it so that you punch all the way through that fabric. And, um, in here, then for here, I just did a ribbon closure, and I'll just show you show you that because you could hand stitch it. I don't really love this particular ribbon that I got, and that's why I haven't finished it up. But um, I doubled over the ribbon because I didn't like it so much. But all I did was just um, I doubled it over. It was really thin, um, and then I tucked it underneath and just hand stitched it. So this side is still pinned, as you can see, and not on all the way. But at least it would give you a temporary closure if you want to just tie it up with, you know, if you're going to take it with you or something like that. And you could also do something like a, um, 
a button closure like this where you put you know a piece of thread or yarn on on one side and then a button on this side um, anyway it's just an idea for like a, a super simple and, and quick closure of course there are lots of ways you could go you just need to plan it a little more in advance and these weren't big enough that we could sew something on and then turn them inside out which would be really nice too but that is that and I think that's all we have time for for today so if you make your journals I hope that you'll share them in the group and share your page ideas share your pocket ideas share your I even have more ideas that that we didn't do today but I hope that you'll consider sharing them in our group so let me put that up real fast uh, while we transition here so that is uh, Living Felt Friends on Facebook is our group. That's where we hang out all week. And you're also welcome to tag us on Instagram. Um, I'm going to do better. I can't always say that to, to get more on Instagram. But um, you can tag us on Instagram and all the supplies that we used and all the references for our past tutorials. They are on YouTube, but you can also see them on our website. Let me just put that up one more time. On our website, if you scroll to the bottom, see the link that says YouTube videos and then we started putting those up late 2019 I think posting the links there so you can see what they are and also when there's a PDF download you can grab it beneath that video um, yeah I think that's it can we do good we did great cool okay so Anne's gonna come in we're gonna give away some prizes and tell us what you got today Anne I'll be the I'll be Vanna oh perfect <laughs> So today you can choose either an MC1 Studio Pack of your choice or MC1, not MC1, Merino Top Studio Pack. <laughs> this one right here is our Beach Party Pack. We have Studio Packs available in color families and theme packs as well. Mm, super fun. Okay, so for everyone who's been participating today and been feverishly writing down names to get into the bowl, and so we're going to draw a couple of names right now. You go ahead. I'll hold the bowl. Oh, awesome. And you draw. Okay. <laughs> She's not peeking. <laughs> not even a little. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. She got both of them. That's okay. You so those are the, your two winners right there. Two. Yep. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Thanks. <sighs> okay. Uh, first winner is Kathleen St. Clair. Woohoo! Where's Kathleen? You win. And who else? Nancy Betrano. <laughs> Very cool. Nancy and Kathleen, congratulations, gals. And thank you all so much for hanging out with us today and making our handmade felt journals. So I hope you'll make your fabric if you haven't already. And if your question didn't get answered, please post it down below after the video. If you had fun, we hope you'll consider giving it a thumbs up if you liked it. If you want to see our next videos or the next time we go live, hit the subscribe button and hit that bell so you get notified every time we go live. Share this video with a friend. And what else? Leave your comments down below because then we will draw names and give away more prizes next week from those comments. So thank you all so much for joining us. We hope to see you in our group. And in the meantime, take care of yourself and save all your love notes. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. Right. And write yourself one too at that. You deserve it. Okay, y'all. Be well. Thank you. Bye-bye.